السلام عليكم السلام عليكم السلام عليكم يا أخي من هاجي موجود Are you there? Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, now I can hear you. MashaAllah. Your name is Muhib al-Din? Naam. MashaAllah. Akhi Muhib al-Din. Tayyib. So where do we begin, inshaAllah? Wallahi, shuf. Tell the kalam on the istiwa. وكلام الطبري في الاستواء والامام الطبري ساز بعض الاستواء جميل let's focus right there جميل so نحن ندعي we claim and we state that قبل أن تدعي قبل أن تدعي يا أخي الكريم uh, ذكرني بما قلت على تويتر you said for example before you يعني when I was writing to you and I said I'm going to block you طيب after you made a post and you said that I fleed, why did you say I fleed? Because you blocked me before, I, after I shared the link, you blocked me. Did you, so, did you see my comment that I said to you I'd, I'd unblock I you? I did not see anything. I did not see anything. Because when I was messaging you, yeah, and he, every time I messaged you, within a minute you responded. So I left that comment for a good two to three minutes and then I blocked you. So I thought that perhaps you saw me, you, you saw that comment, but you never saw that comment, huh? I never saw that comment. Now, I saw people continue to discuss with you, but I was blocked, so I had no idea what was going on. Khalas, Labas, that's fine. I will, I'll, I'll let you off there, inshallah. Tafadl, you were saying about Tabari? No, that's, khalas, let's begin again, inshallah ta'ala. So the original discussion was going on about what the Tabari says about Istiwa. And I was saying, نَحْنُ نَدْعِي We claim, الْإِمَامُ الطَّبَرِي says that Istiwa مُتَعَلِّقٌ بِمُلْكٍ وَسُطَانٍ not a physical istiwa. As a matter of fact, we also claim that you can't understand istiwa as sitting and climbing onto something or relaxing over something as the Christians say in the Gospels. This is impossible. This is why in Arabic you have to say about someone sitting and using istiwa, you have to say istawa jalisan. Istawa qa'iman. Wastawa ta'am. Wa illa mahaj hirsbar. Uh, we're claiming, we're stating that istiwa is not understood as you are claiming. And we're stating that a tabari, especially a tabari, he does not believe it as you are claiming. He says it's alu mulk musultan la alu intiqalin wa zawaj. Verbatim. Not only this. He says, وَأَوْلَى الْمَعَانِي Then he says, عَلَى عَلَيْهِنَّ وَرْتَفَعْ فَدَبَّرَهُنَّ بِقُدْرَةِ He doesn't mean it in a physical sense. Not only that, if you continue reading in his tafsir, he goes on to tell you that إِسْتَوَى in ثُمَّ إِسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاء For example, is the same as فَسَوَّاهُنْ It's the same meaning. And throughout his tafsir, he tells you, please go back to where we explained what istawa means. That's our claim, that's our discussion, and we are also claiming that you are misrepresenting Imam al-Tabari on this masala. Tafadba. Tayyip. You finished, yeah? Naam. Khalas. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad. You said a few things. One of them, you said, we're discussing Tabari's uh, position on istiwa. Now, we both know istiwa is an Arabic word which has different meanings. If you were to be more specific and precise, we are discussing Tabari rahimahullah's uh, kalam in the ayah in Surah Baqarah, verse number 29. So the istiwa we're talking about here is muta'addiya bi ila and also ala. In other verses, okay, that's the first point which you uh, fail to mention because if you're just talking about Tabri's position on Istiwa as very general, we're being very specific because this is where يعني, you're quoting from this verse here, Surah Baqarah, verse number 29, which is Thumma sab samawat and so on and so forth. Number one, number two, uh, your claim obviously that 
Tabir rahimahullah ta'ala is specifying the meaning to be uh, istiwa or ulu of mulk and sultan, la of ulu of zawal and intiqal and so on and so forth. And then you said wa awl al-ma'ani and then you quoted. Uh, and I don't know why you just quoted that and stopped there. In fact, I don't know why you started right from the start of his tafsir because that quote is يعني, a bit down. Uh, when obviously you read a text, you're supposed to read it right from the start, not from the middle or the end, whatever the case is. You read it from the starting point of the passage to the end. That's how you understand the text, not just p- picking out a sentence or two. Uh, secondly, you said that we ascribe to istiwa, that we, we, we don't understand istiwa, <coughs> or Tabari doesn't understand istiwa the way we do. At this point, I'd like to ask you, <clears throat> uh, not too long, because obviously you gave me time to speak. Uh, what, what do you understand that we say about istiwa and that we infer upon Tabari? What do you think that we believe about istiwa? Uh, well, finish what you have to say in total, and then I'll respond to each point. Well, I, I can't. That's why I said to you say it very briefly, because in order for me to understand and dialogue with you, I have to stand. I have to understand what you mean. Uh, so hence I'm asking the question, so if you could answer that very briefly, what do you think we mean when we say istiwa, that's not in accordance with somebody? Montez, get the, get the, get the, isma, isma. Which of your groups are you referring to so I can give you their response? What do you mean which of our groups? You know very well that we don't have a group. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, there's drive-bys happening in Atlanta between your groups. Yeah. I'll, I'll, make it, group? I'll, I'll make it easy for you. Ibn Taymiyyah. Ibn Taymiyyah? Yep. Ibn Taymiyyah, Mujassim. He believes that there's a physical action that took place that's similar to what's in the Gospels. No, no, no. Who else? You said, to, uh, you just asked me whose opinion do, do I take for Istiwa because it's many groups, yes, even though I deny that. Ibn okay. I said he so what? exactly what's in the Gospels. Wait, wait, wait. Give me the, the definition of Istiwa according to Ibn Taymiyyah. Yalla. No, I'm not giving you a definition. You, asked you me, just said, you what just do said I now. Understand from what Ibn the no, Giga, no, the no, Giga no, Minhaji, Haji, Al An, Al An, this is Rakan no one. I want everybody to know. You made the idea, no, no, you said no, to no, me, no, no, I asked you a question. No, 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 one second, one second. I didn't talk when you were speaking. I asked you a very simple question to, you asked me so, to speak right now. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you never answered because I said to you very clearly, I give me, answer. wait a second, Isbir, wait a second. I said to you, give me the definition of what do you think we mean by Istiwa. Then you turned around and said, well, you many groups, I don't know which group you follow, which is, of course, Another lie. Anyways, I said to you, Tayyip, give me, give me the giga. Yes, I didn't speak when you were speaking. No, 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 I didn't speak when you were speaking. I didn't speak when you were speaking. I did not speak when you were speaking. So please have ihtiram and let me answer. Let, let, let me speak. Tayyip, I let you. Are you finished now? Are you finished? Well, I give you your answer. So continue what you were saying, so I can comment on. The that right. I'll ask you again for the second time. Can you give me the meaning of istiwa according to Ibn Taymiyyah? Because I just asked you now, what do you think that we mean by istiwa? You, you turn answer. around. It's Wait a second. In the Gospels, that he sat. Okay. Give me. Oh, can you quote it, please? Can you quote it? <laughs> No, I'm not going to quote it because that's not the point of our discussion. I'm not As going to quote answer, it, mashallah. I'll give you the simple answer. Mashallah. Yes, I'm mashallah. not going to quote, okay? That's fine. It's, no, no, that's, it's fine, it's noted. I, I, it's noted that you're not going to quote. Khalas. Tayyip. Tayyip. Yes, for simple answer again. Next. 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 Uh, nobody else speak, just me and Brother Minhaji, please. Oh, Tayyip, so you're not okay. going to quote it. Tayyib, let's, let's carry on, inshallah. Even though this is going to be complicated. La, la, khalas, khalas, you don't want to quote? I'll carry on then. Okay, so if you can remain silent, inshallah. If you can remain silent, let me carry on. Tayyib, so you mentioned that, Tabir uh, rahimahullah ta'ala mentions that uh, this ulu is ulu mulkun sultan and so on and so on. Tayyib, uh, can I ask you a question, please? Uh, can you please mention to me what istiwa, uh, somebody says about the other meanings of istiwa at the start? No, you can ask me a question. You can finish what you have to say and then I'll comment. Khalas. Tabari ta'ala, he says very clearly in regards to the different meanings for istiwa. If you look at right at the start of the tafsir, thumma istawa ila samai fa sawahunna sab'a samawat, he mentions that many of the people, yani ikhtalafu fi ta'wi qawlillahi azza wa jal, thumma istawa ila samai. Then he mentions some of the meanings they say if he was muqbilan ala fulan and so on and so forth. And then he mentions another meaning being uh, how this istiwa. It refers to irtifa' and ulu, and he mentions the other meanings of istiwa, meaning istiqama bihi, and so on and so forth. He mentions different meanings for istiwa. Then Tabari, what does he say? 
وقال بعضهم الاستواء هو العلو والارتفاع وممن قال ذلك الربيع بن انس من التابعين and he and he quoted the sanad and he said that ربيع said ثم استوى الى السماء يقول ارتفع الى السماء okay طيب then he carries on he says ثم اختلف متأول الاستواء بمعنى العلو والارتفاع في الذي استوى الى السماء في ايش في الذي استوى الى السماء فقال بعضهم الذي استوى الى السماء وعلى عليها هو خالقها ومنشئها وقال بعضهم بل العالي عليها الدخان الذي جعله الله للارض سماء so we have two opinions here who did the istiwa who did this action so tabri saying that some said it was the creator allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and others said that it was the smoke طيب now على كل حال uh, we know that the position of Tabari is that this is ascribed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah is the one who did the istiwa. Now, of course, you mentioned Ulum al Sultan. Notice how Tabari rahimahullah, in these different meanings of istiwa, he doesn't mention Ulum al or Sultan as being the meaning at all. He doesn't mention that. What does he say? <coughs> when you quoted Wa'awl al Ma'ani, okay, Wa'awl al Ma'ani, you forgot to quote what was before. So, for example, let me quote it to you. Qala Abu Ja'far. الاستواء في كلام العرب okay, he mentions here that uh, the kalam of the Arab is uh, منصرف على وجوه and then he mentions those اوجه and then he says here يعني uh, as you can see uh, ومنها العلو الارتفاع كقول القائل استوى فلان على سريره يعني به علوه عليه so استوى بمعنى ايش العلو and this is what اهل السنة السلفيون believe and this is what Ibn Taymiyyah رحمه الله تعالى mentions as well in his books not that as you say he took it from the gospels and the christians and so on and so forth which is of course uh, an inference on your part which you cannot provide evidence for and you yourself don't want to provide you said but here it mentions very clearly that علو الارتفاع كقول القائل كقول القائل استوى فلان على سريره يعني به علوه عليه now, what does Tabri say? وَأَوْلَى الْمَعَانِ بِقَوْلِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ After citing all of those meanings, he says, ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ فَسَوَّهُنَّ أَيْ عَلَى عَلَيْهِنَّ وَارْتَفَعَ That he elevated above them and he rose. فَدَبَّرَهُنَّ بِقُدْرَتِهِ And then what did he do? He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created them by his قُدْرَةِ his ability. وَخَلَقُهُنَّ سَبَعَ سَمَوَاتِ And he created them seven heavens. What did he say? يعني, and which example did he give just before? So Tabari is affirming here Allah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ulu wa Dhati. And we, Ahl Sunnah, we believe, believe in Ulu wa Allah, Allah that, His Qahar, and also His Qadr. يعني المطلق. Then Tabari continues and says, وَالْعَجِبُ مِمَّنْ أَنْكَرَ الْمَعْنَ الْمَفْهُومِ مِنْ كَلَامِ الْعَرَبِ فِي تَأْوِيقَ لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ أَلَّذِي هُوَ بِمَعْنَ الْعُلُوِ الْإِرْتِفَاعِ Again, we don't have any sense of Mulk and Sultan at this point because Tabari has not mentioned it within the meanings. And then he gave the meaning, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a ulu. Yani he's above, he's over it. And this, these words are ma'loom. And, and, and yani if you're an Arab and you don't understand it like this, then uh, musibah. Then he says, Subhanallah, harban عند نفسه من أن يلزمه بزعمه. Now, why does this person not understand this tiwa in this way? <coughs> to mean ulu. Because according to his necessitation, his ilzam, إِذَا تَأَوَّلُهُ بِمَعْنَاهُ الْمُفْهِمْ And this is the key of the whole quote. بِمَعْنَاهُ الْمُفْهِمْ if, if you was to understand istiwa according to how it actually is understood, as it says here, كَذَلِكْ أَنْ يَكُونَ إِنَّمَا عَلَى وَارْتَفَعَ بَعْدَ أَنْ كَانَ تَحْتَهَا It would mean that after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made istiwa, that he rose above and elevated, that would have necessitated he was under it. Now, let me ask you a very... Well, I'm not going to ask you the question like this, hypothetically. It, it, something being below, the opposite as what of being above, يعني عَلَى نِرْتَفَعَ here are treated by Imam al-Tabari as actions, not as metaphors, being irtifa' and ulu of mulk and sultan and so on and so forth. Because Tabari here, he's working and he's refuting an ilzam. Because if, according to this person, you affirm Allah rose over and he was above over, or whatever the case is, that would mean, an kana tahtaha, that he has to be underneath it before. Ila an ta'awwalahu bi malhuli min ta'wilihi al-mustankar. Then he says, of course, that this is the ta'wil that he's given is, is, is mardud, is, is rejected, because he says what? Istiwa is al-iqbal. As he says, thumma lam yanju mimma haraba min. فَيُقَالُ لَهُ زَعَمْتَ أَنَّ تَأْوِي قَالُهُ اسْتَوَى أَقْبَلَ أَفَكَانَ مُدْبِرًا عَنِ السَّمَاءِ فَأَقْبَلَ إِلَيْهَا Because then this person he says, no, istiwa here doesn't mean أَلَا وَرْتَفَعَ Because of the ilzam, rather it means أَقْبَلَ So then, يعني, here again, Tabari is he's working with an ilzam. This is ilzam and al-khasm. It's not establishing creed at all. He says that يعني, when you say أَقْبَلَ 
أَفَكَانَ مُدْبِرًا عَنِ السَّمَاءِ فَأَقْبَلَ إِلَيْهَا Was Allah turned away from the heavens and then he looked towards it or then he turned towards it. فَإِنْ زَعَمَ أَنَّ ذَلِكَ لَيْسَ بِإِقْبَالِ فِعْل لَيْسَ بِإِقْبَالِ فِعْل If he says this is not an إقبال فعل ولكنه إقبال تدبير قيل له it is said فَكَذَلِكَ فَقُلْ عَلَى عَلَيْهَا عَلُوَ مُلْكٍ وَسُلْطَانٍ لَا عَلُوا إِنْتِقَالُ وَزَوَالٍ So then why would you go through the whole hey, hey, exactly this is against you I don't know why you're getting happy إش كذلك أي في إلزامك just your, your necessitation at the start when you said that يعني علو has to mean that he's beneath well why don't you say why don't you just say the giga why don't you just say the giga لا I'm not finished I'm not finished hey I'm, I'm yes I'm finishing I'm finishing طيب thank you زاد نعم so Tabari here is saying, فَكَذَلِكَ فَقُلْ Likewise say, in regards to the ulu of Allah, ulu ala alayha, ulu wa mulkin wa sultan, la ulu wa intiqal wa zawal. Why? Because the za'am of this person is that he believes that the, in, that the ulu of Allah and the istiwa of Allah has to be that of intiqal and zawal. Intiqal and zawal are not from the ma'ani of istiwa. And Tabari did not mention them from the ma'ani of istiwa. And neither do Ahlul Sunnah say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to move intiqal and bayna khalqihi wa zawal. We don't believe that at all. That's not our belief. And then what does he say? ثُمَّ لَنْ يَقُولُ فِي شَيْءٍ مِنْ ذَلِكَ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا أَلْزَمَ فِي الْآخِرِ مِثْلَهُ And this is, this is ilzam. And then to destroy the argument further, because you're saying it's not an action and so on and so forth. Tabri straight after, what does he say? قَالَ أَبُوْ جَعْفَرُ وَإِنْ قَالَ لَنَا قَائِلِ If somebody says to us, أَخْبِرْنَا عَنْ إِسْتِوَاءِ اللَّهِ جَلَّ ثَنَاءُهُ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَانَ قَبَلْ خَلْقَ السَّمَاءِ أَمْ بَعْدَهُ Was this before or after creation? قِيلَ بَعْدَهُ Tabri says it's after. This is showing that Tabri is treating this sifa as an action of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mutaalliq bi mashiatihi jalla wa ala. You can't say it's ulul mulkun sultan. Allah's ulul mulkun sultan is eternal. It's not bound by time. And you as Ash'aris, you, you say Allah is outside of time and space. So how can Tabri rahimullah specify by saying after the creation of the heavens and earth, yani the ulul of Allah's mulkun sultan was after the creation of the heavens and earth? La yaqulu bihi ahad. And then he carries on. We can carry on, but I'll stop here. And let me just hear no, your question. No, no, that, that, that's, that's more than enough. Thank you. Uh, okay, we allowed allow you to speak and get it out of your system. All right, now we're going to respond. First, you started by saying that we were cherry-picking Al-Imam Al-Tabari's words. La mahsal shahul. No, that did not happen. As a matter of fact, that's what we accuse you with. But we'll leave that for another day, inshallah ta'ala. That's number one. Number two, you claimed that you are all one group. This is not true. As a matter of fact, the so-called Salafiyya or Wahhabiyya are about another thousand different groups. As a matter of fact, stick, if everything mean will say one... Uh, stick to the topic. No, stick to the topic. Uh, this is part of the topic. But no, it's so, not. The topic is Tabari's creed, to not Salafi so groups. Please, Tabari's creed. So stick to the topic, please. No, no, no. Keep silent. We allowed you to get it out of your system. Okay, yeah, 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 you can put your microphone on mute. So, there are so many groups. As a matter of fact, one of them will say something is a sifa, and the other one will say, a person that calls kada wa kada sifa is a himal, a donkey. So, I'm pretty sure that you're not one group. Also, in Atlanta, as I was mentioning earlier, because some brothers just messaged me to comment on that, the Masjid of Sayyid al-Tawil and the Masjid of uh, Muhammad al-Anjali, the Kuwaiti Madkhalis, had a drive-by a few years ago. The brothers got killed on the street. So don't come and tell me we're all one group, we're all one creed. That's nonsense. <laughs> also, you do not even have the same identical beliefs. Some of you say Lillahi Surah, another one say Laysa Lillahi Surah. Some say Lillahi Had, another say Laysa Lillahi Had. Some say Lahu Dhul, another say Laysa Lahu Dhul. I mean, at the end of the day, if we were to break down all of these creedal opinions, I mean, this is, this is basically Christianity, really, but without the child. Okay? And this is why I always say, Al-Fariq Bayn Al-Wahhabiyya wa Nasara, it's harsh, but it's the truth. Now let's get to the topic. You said that we were cherry picking and we need to go back to the beginning. No, no, but we can go back to the beginning too. I mean, the book is right in front of me. Okay, we know exactly what the book says. He starts by breaking it down into two different categories. The first category was, what is Istuwa all about? 
The second category, who actually did a stila? Yeah, we know this. We, we get it. We understand what he's discussing. Yes, this is known. And you might say, why are you speaking about this and not Ar-Rahman al Because this is where he explains istiwa. Because that's what he comes after and says. And istiwa in Arabic refers to one, two, three, four, five. And he mentions the evidence for this. And yes, one of them is ulu al Yeah, definitely. Then he comes and says his conclusion. Not his linguistic one. His conclusion of all that we just spoke about is ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ فَسَوَّاهُنَّ عَلَىٰ عَلَيْهِنَّ وَارْتَفَعْ فَدَبَّرَهُنَّ بِقُدْرَتِكْ That's Tabir. That's him maintaining that which, that which he has created. As a matter of fact, there's a thought that he mentions further on in the book that after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created that which he will... He went on to do tadbir. And that's what istawa ala al-arsh means. Tadbir. Oh now the argument that he discusses. This is a beautiful argument. This is perfect. As a matter of fact, this destroys the Wahhabi creed in its entirety. How? He says, some people objected that istawa means ulu and irtifa. Because you might think, Oh, the Ash'aris don't believe it's ulu and irtifa. Yes, because they lie to you. Because all you read is their literature and you only see the other lenses. They're lying. Because we believe in ulu and we believe in irtifa. Because the ulu and irtifa in Arabic can also be applied to a CEO whose office is in the basement. And he still has ulu and irtifa in Arabic because that's Arabic. And this is why when... Imam al-Tabari is saying, why do you object to ulu and irtifa? He said, because uh, that means he was underneath and then he came up. Tabari says, this is nonsense. What's nonsense? That it was intiqal and haraka. This brother, he says, we don't believe in haraka and intiqal. Huh? You don't? You don't? So are you trying to tell me that Ibn Taymiyyah did not say that a Salaf had three opinions on the matter, and one of them said that there is Allah. A Darini in the book that has been fabricated on him. He mentions Haraka. Don't come and act like we're ignorant and we can't read. We read all languages, Ya Habib. You're not going to sit here a bunch in front of students of knowledge and say, you don't know what you're talking about. Ulu and irtifa can also be metaphorical completely without something moving from A to B or top to bottom or bottom to top. Yes, because that's Arabic. Because your CEO could be in the basement and he'll still have complete ulu and irtifa. He says... You're objecting to ulu and irtifa. Well, well, how come you didn't object to iqbal? Couldn't that mean coming and going? He said, well, they said it was iqbal tadbir. That was their justification. Somebody says, fine. Then say it's ulu mulk and sultan. Who comes out, this is ilzam? No, this is a somebody stating clearly that istiwa. It's not him moving from bottom to top. It's not the well. That was refuting you. He's refuting your opinion. He's saying, لا علو انتقال وزوال. And then you say, oh, well, I can, يعني, no, no one says this. Well, no one says this? You're trying to tell me that Ibn Taymiyyah did not say, وهذا هو القول الصحيح والمعنى الصحيح عند أهل الحديث يا رجل يا رجل يعني الله المستعان This is the problem that we're dealing with We're not actually delivering the full message to the masses We're hiding information from them We're tampering with the information when we present them I already commented on several quotes that you and some of your friends were, were mistranslating deliberately. And this is what we do with time and time again. You're mistranslating on purpose 
sorry, can what? someone take off their microphone? There's, there's, there's some sounds. Brother Abdullah, can you please take your microphone off? I can't, I can't hear that. Thank you. Carry on, sorry, Akhir Mahabuddin. So then, and then you quoted the next statement where he says, mm. Was this qabla, qabla khalq al samai and ba'da khalq al samai? See, this is fair. See, this is fair. Um, yeah, uh, this has nothing to do with it being fair. Uh, uh, the whole situation has nothing to do with fair. Oh it has to do with tabir. So the fact that it's before or after is really irrelevant. And finally, the issue of ta'adda. Bahar Fajr. Um, yeah, it, even if it has ta'addi Bahar Fajr, it could still mean that it wasn't physical. So, yeah, just repeating that. Oh, well, I can. The ta'addi Bahar Fajr. With ta'addi Bahar Fajr. Yeah, that doesn't really help uh, anything, really. Because you ta'addi Bahar Fajr, and it could be. Um, it could yet to be Kamal, what Tamam, what Tadbir. Now, if you look at the Arab, Hada, Fi, look at the Arab. Now, the problem that we're having here is that you're not reading what a Tabari said. No. You are transforming what a Tabari said to meet what you believe in. But the fact of the matter is, what you believe in. Is not what the Salaf believed in. It's not what the scholars of the Muslims have been on for 1400 years. No. Um, to be honest with you, I just noted three points because most of it was just you just talking about how, uh, you know. I don't understand Tabari and so on and so forth, but I'm actually very, very shocked. I mean, I presume you're you're Arab, you're Egyptian, you sound Egyptian. I'm not even an Arab. No, I'm American. Actually, I'm not Egyptian. So, so you're you're not where, where did so you're not ethnically Arab. No, I'm not. Okay, Hamza, because if that was the case, then it would be it would have been a very big musiba because uh, <laughs> you, honestly, your language, the, the fact that okay, that's a very that's a very uh, funny laugh. That's um, a good one. No, no it's, it's, it's true. Attack. It's true because uh, the, this kalam, true. this this these words are so clear as daylight. I I literally am gobsmacked as to how you don't understand how this is not absolutely false <laughs> against you. I mean, look, there's three points you mentioned. One of them you mentioned ulu uh, nirtifa doesn't have to always be you know physical and so on and so forth. It can mean you know, it can have its own majazi meaning ala kulli hal. You 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 then you like you you brought the example of a CEO and so on and so forth. Like, um, I was just waiting for the dalil for that. So, for example, you said ulu and irtifa uh, in this context can have a different meaning, a metaphorical one. Well, you know, you didn't provide an evidence, not even one. Tabari, in fact, does. He says, "Waminha al ulu wal irtifa kaqaul al qail." Listen carefully. Kaqaul al qail istawa fulanun ala siririhi yani bihi uluhu alay. So ulu and irtifa in this context, okay, mutadda bi ala bidwa to be above it. Uluwahu alay. Tabri is not talking about the specifications of the action, and this is where you're conflating between what we say about Allah Azza wa Jalla and, and, and humans. You're trying to understand, or not saying you are, but yani, this is where the, the logical, um, the logical uh, result ends in is that you think Allah's istiwa is like that of the creation. We're telling you no, it's, it's an istiwa that doesn't it befits His Majesty. But then Tabri carries on and he talks about ala uh, alayhin at this point in time, he has not mentioned. Any of meanings of ulu and mulk and sultan and so on and so forth. When it was fardan upon Tabri to mention that, because he's mentioned all the other meanings, but yeah, and he's failed to mention it except at the ilzam. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, and obviously, when you were you were quoting a bit of Tabari, uh, but you never really explained it. You know, you were giving some type of explanation, which I'm sorry was very very off and not according to the language. I went through Tabri's statement, and I'll go through again. وَالْعَجِبُ مِمَّنْ أَنْكَرَ الْمَعْنَى الْمَفْهُومِ مِنْ كَلَامِ الْعَرَبِ he, he, he ref- <laughs> It's astonishing, and this is what I say to you. وَالْعَجِبُ مِمَّنْ أَنْكَرَ الْمَعْنَى الْمَفْهُومِ مِنْ كَلَامِ الْعَرَبِ You know, how can you deny the, the, this meaning of the, the kalam of the Arabs regarding ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ أَلَّذِي هُوَ بِمَعْنَى الْعُلُورِ وَارْتِفَاعِ when Tabri says, Alladhi huwa biman al ulu al-irtifa, which ulu al irtifa is he talking about? You're saying it's majazi, referring to Makan and Sultan and so on and so forth, but you haven't brought a dalil. I'm saying it's what the actual words mean in Arabic, which Tabri has given an example before for before. 
اي كقول القائل فلان يو استوى فلان على سريره يعني به علوه عليه I'm giving you adilla for my meaning and you know you haven't presented any then why why does tabri rahimullah say ulul irtifa why because this person haraban 'inda nafsihi an yalzimahu tabri uses the word yalzim yani this is an ilzam he's dealing with a person who's denying these sifat i mean he's not he's not trying to prove that istiwa is more consultant that's what you're saying but i'm sorry the, the words do not support you at all why because he's telling you there's a person here haraban 'inda nafsihi min an yalzimahu bi za'mihi what what's his za'm يعني إذا تأوله بمعناه المفهم this is the key word what is معناه المفهم you're saying the معنى المفهم is علو الارتفاع of Sultan al-Mulk but that doesn't make sense you, there's no دليل for number one and number two يعني the Tabri's words after clearly show علو الارتفاع means actual rising and being above why أن يكون إنما على وارتفع بعد أن كان تحتها يعني he's saying that the معنى المفهم according to you is Uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala necessitates your za'am, your ilzam is that because of this clear meaning which is actual rising and being above Allah had to be beneath Tabri saying this is wrong it doesn't necessitate that because what has this led you to do? it has led you to this unheard of rejected ta'wil that you have given which is iqbal of tadbir and so on and so forth then he hasn't run away. He won't be successful from what he's running away from. Yani what's he trying to run away from? What's the brief telling you? He's trying to run away from the ilzam. He's trying to run away from the necessitation that if istiwa is ulun irtifa, actual ulun irtifa being above and being high, that means Allah is below. Therefore, we have to give a different meaning to istiwa here. This is what Tabri is saying. For you call Allah, then it is said to him, Zamta, you claimed, you necessitated, and the ta'wil callahu istawa akbala. You, you, you're now saying that the istiwa means akbala as opposed to ulun irtifa. Then Tabri is saying, yani, again, look, these, these are af'al. Afakana mudbiran an is samahi fa akbala ilayha. Was he turned away from the heavens, you know, and then he had to turn towards them. And then what did he say? Yani, the person, for in za'ma anna dalika laysa bi iqbal fi'al. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not saying it's iqbal of fi'l, just like you're saying istiwa is not of one of fi'l, but rather it's majazi, meaning sultan and mulk and so on and so forth. وَلَكِنَّهُ iqbal tadbir. Rather it's iqbal tadbir, because this person, he just says that oh, istiwa is iqbal, without mentioning to us whether it's of fi'l or of tadbir. But he's running away from the necessitations. Tabri rahimullah said, right, okay, when it comes to istiwa, يعني, of being ala and so on and so forth, why didn't you, فَكَذَلِكَ فَقُلْ Look what he's saying, قِيلَ لَهُ It said to him, this is ilzaman, not taqreeran, فَكَذَلِكَ What do you mean kathalika? What does kathalika mean in the Arabic language? Referring to the ilzam, referring to his, يعني, inference and his necessitations. فَقُلْ Then say, عَلَى عَلَيْهَا عَلُوُ الْمُكْ وَسُلْطَانِ لَا عَلُوُ انْتِقَالُ وَزَبَالِ Why don't you just say about the عُلُوُ of Allah Azza wa Jal that it's عُلُوُ of Mulk and Sultan as opposed to انتقال and زوال meaning that انتقال and زوال are not from the meanings of istiwa that we affirm I said to you right at the beginning أهل السنة we affirm the عُلُوُ of Allah his عُلُوُ الذات القاهر and القدر so this عبارة for us is لا إشكال في we believe in Allah's عُلُوُ and Mulk and Sultan which is abadi and we believe his ulu of that and his qahar as well and his qadr you know we can accept that but you, you know you can't thumma lan yaqulu fi shay'in min dhalika qawlan illa alzamahu fi al-akhir mithlahu because if he then persists afterwards then it's ilzam upon ilzam and then it's, it's, it's going to be the same back and forth argumentation walaw la anna karihna itarata al-kitab bima laysa min jinsihi al-anba'na an fasad qawl kull qail qala fi dhalika qawlan li qawli ahli al-haqq fihi mukhalifa Tabri here is telling you himself that we could have mentioned all the aqwal of the people of Bid'ah and the people who are misguided in regards to this statement. Uh, you know, we would have told you all of their statements, but of course, يعني, the Ahl al-Haq, uh, it's clear what they say. Then Tabri mentions, and then uh, the second point which you mentioned, which I've noted down, you said that istiwa, is, this is istiwa of tadbir, because he says, well, you said at the start, فَدَبَّرُهُنَّ بِقُدْرَةِ That has no ta'allaq with this, the word istiwa. ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ عَلَىٰ عَلَيْهِنَا وَرْتَفَعْ فَدَبَّرُهُنَّ بِقُدْرَةِ Here we believe that there's, there's, there's no uh, contention there. Regarding it being before and after, this causes a problem for you. Because if you're saying this is istiwa of tadbir, tayyib, so Allah's istiwa and his tadbir happened after the creation of the heavens and the earth. Yani, that doesn't make sense. Allah's tadbir has always been there. Again, it causes a problem for, for your understanding. If you're saying istiwa here is majazi, whatever the case is, you still have this problem of... Uh, 
قبل and بعد because as you say Allah cannot be contained in, in, in time and creation and so on and so forth Obviously, we don't say that either however we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does actions whenever he wills Jalla wa ala. and Tabri clearly says it you know Tabri is treating this not as a metaphor he's treating it as an actual action of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says akhbirna an istiwa illah an istiwa illah if you're saying that the istiwa of Allah was bad then you're saying that Allah has acquired this sifa of Yani istiwa being tadbir after the creation of and Allah can't acquire new sifat and so on and so forth. It's just problems upon problems upon problems. And this this is the worst quote any Ash'ari can bring from Tabari. I'm sorry. Because if you're talking about the creed of Tabari, which is the title of your, your, your discussion here, why should we not quote other places where Tabari Rahimullah talks about istiwa upon Arsh? Uh, Imam Tabari Rahimullah Ta'ala mentions in many places, for example, uh, in Surah Taha, Ar Rahmanu ala al Arsh Istawa, he says, Ala alayhi. Ala alayhi, you know what is ala alayhi the ha? What is referred to the arsh? Yani he rose over it. This can't be. This cannot be mulk. Uluf uh, mulk and sultan. It does not work in the Arabic language. Likewise, for example, al rahmanu ala al arsh istawa. Uh, in another place, uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions this is surah Taha. Sorry, the previous one was surah uh, Ra'ad, verse number two. This is surah uh, Taha, <coughs> verse number five. If you open it in the in the tabri that you have, al rahmanu ala arshihi irtafa wa ala. You know, upon his throne, he rose and he elevated above it. Yani, this is muhtasan bil arsh. This istiwa is muhtasan bil arsh. If it is, yani, ulul mulk and sultan, Allah never had his ulul mulk and sultan over the arsh before. It doesn't make sense. I mean, another one, wa huwa ma'akum aina ma kuntum, and he is with you wherever you are. What does Tabari say? Wa huwa shahidun lakum ayyuhan nas aina ma kuntum ya'lamukum wa ya'lamu amalakum wa mutqablukum wa mutwaakum wa huwa ala arshihi fawqa samawatihi sab'a you know, he knows where, he, you know, Allah says in this Surah 57 verse 4, and he is with you wherever you are, because obviously the Hululiyah, they use this to prove that Allah is everywhere. Tabari says very clearly, and he is witnessing you all, O mankind, wherever you are. He knows you, he knows your actions, he knows your movements and your abodes, and he is over his throne above his seven heavens. وَهُوَ عَلَى عَرْشِهِ فَوْقَ سَمَوَاتِهِ السَّبَعِ And then what does he do? He brings the... Uh, the, the, for the other ayah ما يكون من نجوى ثلاثة إلا هو رابعهم there is not a third from them except that he is the fourth surah 58 verse number 7 what does Tabri say here and he says وعني بقوله and his meaning يعني he means by وهو رابعهم بمعنى أنهم مشاهدهم بعلمه وهو على عرشه you know uh, he, he, he is with them by his knowledge and he is over his arsh وهو على عرشه you can't say this refers to his mulk and his sultan. I'm sorry. The, the ayat are clever. Wa huwa rabi'um. He is the fourth of them. Yani of course, raddan ala hululiyah. What does the tabari say? Wa huwa ala arshihi. And then he brings the qawl of the dahak, which you say it's not authentic, which is absolutely fine, because we don't need the qawl of the dahak. There's many of the qawl of the salaf. But nonetheless, tabari, to reinforce his position, to reinforce his understanding, he brings the, the qawl uh, of the dahak. Ma yakunu min najwa thalathatin ila qawlihi wa huwa ma'ahum. The haq says, huwa fawqa al-arsh wa ilmuhu ma'ahum. He, meaning Allah, is above the arsh and his knowledge is with them. And you don't agree with this at all because you don't ascribe direction to Allah and fawqiyya and so on and so forth. Ala kulli hal. Um, and even if you say this narration is weak and so on and so forth, Tayyib, Tabari, he brought it. And you you guys accuse us of being mujassima if we say Allah is above the arsh. But he quotes the, 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 the statement of the haq, wa huwa fawqa al-arsh, wa huwa fawqa al-arsh. Is this not problematic for Tabari now? He didn't know that this is a tajseem. Ala kulli hal. Another one, Amin tumman fi sama. Yani the ashara, they say, oh, this refers to the angels and the malaika, like Dr. Hamza al Bakri says, for example, in one of his YouTube videos. But what does Tabri say? Amin tumman fi sama. Wa huwa Allah. And that is referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then there is one more other quote, which I won't quote now, perhaps later. But yani, if you're talking about the creed of Tabri, look at why he says istiwa in this place, and then look at what he says in regards to istiwa in other places as well. I mean, I'll just leave it with you here. And the third thing I noted down, which I'll just quickly say, is that a lot of your claims were just, uh, you know, I'm sorry to say, Brother Muhibbuddin, you know, Samihni, it's just iddia, you're just claiming without actually providing evidence. You're not providing evidence, you're not showing us how we're wrong, you're not even showing your own position of how it's right. So, I mean, I don't know how to respond to these iddia'at. Uh, what, what do you have to say regarding this? Okay, so you're done? I'm done. Okay, after my response, inshallah, we'll give closing arguments, and that'll be it for today, because I only have an hour to begin with, Laba. inshallah ta'ala, so allow me to respond. Bismillah. 
Um, let's go back to, let me pull that back up right, ah, Montez did them, did them, did them. So, Al-Tabari responded by the person's objection to Ulu and Irtifa' because of the issue of him taking it literally. So, Al-Tabari told him, well, then just say Ulu Mulk and Sultan, not Intiqal and Zawal. I don't need evidence if we're reading from what Al-Tabari himself said, but, I mean, if I do need evidence, I mean, and also, the attacks on me as a person say, I don't know Arabic, Brother Akhi, uh, can you turn your turn your speakers off, please? Turn your mic off, uh, Brother Samuas. Uni Ban D. There's a brother with his micro. Thank you, Zakhir. Afwan, tafadil, Akhi, tafadil, tafadil. You want additional evidence, even though I don't need any if we're reading directly from Tabari, but sure, not a problem. Here, irtifa is not physical, and yet it's called irtifa. سامحني اخي ورفعنا بعضهم لا لا سامحني عفوا وين لا بس اخي سوماس وين يو سيد اوبسي وين ذيز اكزامبلز يو برينجينج يعني على راسي والعين وي اجري وذ ذا كان يو برينج اكزامبلز وذ ذيس سياق يعني بيكوز اف يور ارجيمنت از جوينج تو يعني ستاند يو هاف تو برينج ذا ذا مينينج اوف علو الانتفاع وذ ذا سياق اوف istiwa ila sama aw istiwa ala you can't bring other general ayat because it doesn't fit they're not, they're not the same because you know arabic words have meanings in different contexts the context we're talking about like i said right at the start is that's why you have to be precise we're not talking about istiwa we're talking about istiwa ila sama aw istiwa ala i'm not ala. speaking about istiwa so, so you, you have to bring you have to bring, no, to bring no, examples no, from no, the, the exact no, siyaq no, because this is khiyana no, ilmiya yeah. hada khiyana ilmiya la yahsan la yahsan First of all, you need to pay attention to what I'm saying first. No, I, I, I know. Don't get, but you are bringing, your notes. You're bringing different verses for no, something I'm that... I'm speaking about what irtifa' means. I'm speaking about what أخي. irtifa' means نحن نتفق. Yeah, that's fine. I'm saying to you, can you bring an example of the majazi meaning of ulun irtifa' with the siyaq, thumma stawa ila sama, or thumma stawa ala al-arsh. هذا ما نحن فيه. We're not talking about ارتفاع yeah. generally. يا رجل يا رجل. That's not what I, I'm not right now. I'm not speaking about استواء. Take push that off to the side. I'm not speaking about علو. Push off the side. I'm speaking but about the ha- word alone. ارتفاع. لا يا أخي. But we're talking. We're that's um, that's that's the whole discussion here. You can't do that because that's خيانة علمية. If you're gonna bring different uh, I, words I, I, in I different contexts, you bring, can't apply it. I can't bring all of the meanings of the word ارتفاع in Arabic. لا لا لا. No, of course not. أبدا. This is uh, <laughs> سبحان الله. <laughs> Why do you want to bring different? Wait, wait. Why do you want to bring different meanings in a context that's completely different? Uh, brothers, please don't get involved. Let, let him get it all out. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, there's one thing, Allah Samaht. Bring me examples of the majazi meaning of ulun irtifa' in the context of the words thumma stawa ila sama or ala al arsh. But not anything else. Not wa rafa'na laka dhikrak. No, this is not. 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 Yalla, it doesn't get better than that. Repeat again. Come on. You want the exact thing? I wasn't even speaking about that, but you wanted to bring it up. That's fine. Not that you speak Arabic and you're saying it. I'm saying you bring a delil that the Arabs use it in this way. Yabmi, they say it every single day in every market on the face of the planet. Yeah, I'm not talking about the markets. I'm not talking about the awam. I'm talking about Ahlul Ilm. 
the, 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 the ulama of Lugha. I'm not talking about your, your average Joe Ahmed. Well, I'll tell you this. Let me finish my response. Tfadl, tfadl. Tfadl, tfadl. Sorry, sorry. Tfadl, tfadl. Okay, and then you can go and open up Lisan al-Arab and look for it. Tayyib, tayyib. Okay. I, again, what I was saying, all right. Uh, okay, I was saying that the words ulu and irtifa in Arabic can be used to not actually mean physical movement. And I gave examples because Brother Ehsan stated I presented no evidence whatsoever. Some of my evidence, I said, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ وَرَفَعْنَا بَعْضُهُمْ فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ دَرَجَاتٍ And I was stating, a brother kindly quoted, عَلَى فِي الْأَرْضِ Speaking about the Pharaoh. كلام جميل. They say in our books of fiqh, رفع اليد رفع اليد it means an individual is releasing their ownership of something it's used in our madhab a lot especially when we have to buy and sell dogs because in our madhab you cannot do so all of these are considered what majaz usage the point that I'm making here is that if I were to say istawa means ulu and irtifa, it does not necessitate anything physical. Warafa at-talib ala zumalai. The student was raised above his classmates. What does this mean? This means that his he, his status was higher. He's a straight-A student, for example. The teacher favored him. <coughs> Jamil. These examples can be found in the dictionary. All of what I just mentioned can be found in the dictionary. Allah Musa said to Muhammad, they say, Rufi'a. Um, ah, I forgot that example. But you can find it in the dictionary. Uh, Allah Musa said to no, Muhammad, Rufi'a uh, ila sultan. That means it was presented to the sultan. Ulu is the same exact thing in the dictionary. It can be stood, it can be used and understood as a status, not something physical. And as for the brother right now, he objected in between when I was speaking, even though we said we're not going to do that, but obviously, you know, no one follows rules anymore. Um, it is, he's saying, give it to me in the same siyaq of the ayah. The same linguistical structure. He says that it will have a different meaning. Thumma rufi'at al qadiyya ila al qadi. That's the same exact meaning, and it's in Arabic and it's in the dictionary. Open up any dictionary in Arabic, and you'll see that it's there. Open up. Al-Wasid, open up Al-Sahah, open up Lisan Al-Arab. Dive in deeper. Don't rely on secondary sources because they only pick and choose whatever they want you to believe in. This is in the dictionary. Okay, now. All of that being said, and this is obvious. I'm not done yet. Okay, <clears throat> And the fact that he said to the person understanding istawa as ulu and irtifa by physical means, he says no. No. Understand it as ulu mulk and sultan, not ulu intiqal and 
the lead. Now, the brother says, but we do not believe in this. Ah, the Sunnah, of course, they always attribute themselves and refer to themselves as if they're all one creed, which we know this is not the actual case. Karam Jamil, as a matter of fact, they say there's physical nuzul, there's physical haraka, there's physical intiqal, there's physical zawal. Now, of course, the slick ones of that group will come and say, oh, but this is a general statement, it has several meanings. Ya Habibi, Ya Damayant, right now, when I go to any Arab in any place of the world, and I say, Fulk, his normal understanding, his basic understanding means something over something. Yes. That's called Al-Zahr and Al-Wad'u Al-Awwal. In Ilm al However, Arabs from the context also understand additional meanings. Like this verse, which brings us to Tadbir. Then the brother argued and said, and the fact that I mentioned this in my previous statement was important because it destroys the Ash'ari creed. It does? Oh my God, how? Well, because there's a before and after here. If you say he did tadbir, then he didn't have tadbir before? No, ya habibi, no. No, 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 no. See, and again, this is one of the issues where you're not actually reading from primary sources, any ulum shara'iyya, you're taking from secondary sources, i.e. Ibn Taymiyyah, and how he broke things down, and then the Wahhabi's distortion of that information. That's literally what happens. Now, what do we say? We say that, to, he, of course he was always, he always had to be, obviously, obviously. Okay, we're not the ones that claim that there always needs to be creatures around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order for him to be the khaliq, like is mentioned by Ibn Taymiyyah. But we're not going to get into that right now. No, this is not an issue for us. Because the tadbir has to do with the makhluqat, with the creation. Not him subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, he willed a creation, he created it. And therefore maintained it. I mean, it's really that simple. But now what, what, what's happening here, okay, and the majority of the confusion, and I'll expand on this in my closing uh, statement, is that we are reading with the input of Ibn Taymiyyah. If Ibn Taymiyyah was not in the equation, along with the Wahhabi, if they were not in the equation, this discussion would never take place. Okay, and Al-Qabari, throughout his works, I know the brother, he even said, well, why don't we continue reading for Al-Tabari? Uh, there's more to offer on this matter. Karam Jamil. Yes, uh, I do agree. Yes, there's plenty. But, I mean, let's be honest. Doing that in an hour is probably not going to work. We'll probably need a couple months just to read through everything Al-Tabari said so we can understand. But before I allow him to you know, start his final statement, inshallah ta'ala, um, I want to point out that the Qabari, when he's discussing the issue of the Prophet وسلم, sitting next to God on the throne or on the kursi, the fabrication that was attributed to Mujahid, he actually quotes a group of people, and it's very important about this. You need to understand this because this will give you an additional insight to what we are speaking about. He mentions a firqa, a group of innovators, because he's mentioning what all these different groups claim and state on this matter. Okay, now for a tabari, you have to understand essentially there's no issue of the prophet sitting on the arsh. We too don't have an issue with it. Okay, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not, uh, is not sitting. That's in the Bible, right? That, that's not mentioned in Islam, okay? He says that in that firqa, in that group, they say it's okay for the Prophet to sit on the arsh because they believe 
that him sitting on the arsh, he's not filling it up. There's a little space left open, and that's not space, you know, Prophet Muhammad is going to sit next to him. Now, you have to understand something, that <laughs> this, <laughs> this whole discussion actually is from the Christians. And so a lot of people don't forget to tell you, is that in Christian uh, theology, there's a large discussion about having Jesus sitting on the throne next to God to rule over mankind. This is a Christian belief. Okay, but we're not speaking about that right now. The point that I was trying to make here is that an Imam al tabari he actually is mentioning the entire creed of this firqa, of this group. And in that paragraph where he's speaking their whole belief, <coughs> he says that they said that Allah made the arsh and he did istiwa on it, meaning he sat on it. Uh, yes, most of them, or some of them, since as I mentioned earlier, there are uh, <laughs> a large quantity of groups. You really, I mean, I remember one of them in Egypt telling me that al hawini along with Wahid Abdul Salam Bali, have a group. Uh, Yasir Burhami, who told me in person, that he and Muhammad Ismail Muqaddim and Ahmad Farid had their own group. Of course, that became a little bit more like public knowledge after the uh, fake revolutions in Egypt. And the Muhammad Abdul Maqsud had his own thing going on in Cairo, and they actually made tabdi on one another. Literally, tabdi on one another, but in secret. you know, So they can show a united front against the evil devil known as Al-Azhar. <laughs> but anyway, back to this point. So, <clears throat> um, al goes on, you know, he's explaining the creed of this group. And the more you read it, right, the more you realize that um, that is the Wahhabi creed, right? Or some of them, since they're not really all upon the same thing. Um, they say, he, Allah created a, a throne for himself. He sat on this throne. But he didn't fill it, right? He, he left a little gap, right? Uh, there's a little space left on it where he's going to have the Prophet sit next to him. I mean, this stuff, it, well, I mean, you can only find it in the Bible and this stuff is quoted right from there. Karam Jameel. In all cases, Al-Tabari clearly states that Ulu and Irtifa are the meaning of istiwa. Yes. But ulu and irtifa for a tabari is ulu mulk wa sultan wa tadbir. Not a physical movement that took place. And we showed linguistical evidence and we went over what a tabari said and we also responded to the claim that before and after would be an issue. Again, it's not. You know, like the words of Imam Ahmad, Al-Muhdath Tanzilu, La Ainu, Kalam Jameel. But that will conclude my response to the claims the brother made, and he can go ahead and start his closing statement. Was that your closing statement, or was that your closing response? That was my uh, response. I mean, again, uh, again, you didn't answer anything. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. Um, yeah, I mean, when I spoke about the istimal of uh, certain words in different ayat. Uh, so, for example, what did you do? Is that you brought a few verses and then said, "Oh, look, irtifa uh, means this. In that, you know, it has this meaning, and so on and so forth." But that's, that's nothing to do with the verses we are referring to. And again, I asked you before, and I'll ask you again. You need to bring evidence uh, regarding this specific siyaq. Uh, I mean, you brought one from your own head where you said, "Rohi al qadiyatu il al qadi," and I go. That's just a weak example. Uh, reason being is, you know, what is a qadiya? A qadiya is not something which is يعني, an actual thing. A qadiya is an issue or an affair that the affair has been raised to uh, the judge. Uh, يعني, the, the, the affair has been raised to the judge. Uh, this affair is not an actual thing that we're talking about. يعني, <laughs> what is a qadiya? We're talking about the istiwa of Allah Azza wa Jal. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, laysa kamithlihi shay. He subhanahu wa ta'ala did this action, this divine action of istiwa. In a manner which befits his majesty with the meaning of ulu. Uh, I cited many examples from Tabri before. You haven't even touched upon one of them. Uh, I mentioned again uh, Tabri, his uh, statement I went through a second time or even third 
how it shows it doesn't agree with you but again you know you know you didn't really converse with somebody and you didn't explain how and why you were just you know saying that you, you just gave a lot of idiot honestly you know, if anybody who's listening or going to listen to this you know will understand um you know so you're not telling us why you, you know you are uh, right and why we are wrong and how uh, you're just making claims honestly there, there, there is no um uh, I, I can't even work with what you've given me. You haven't given me anything to work with. And you mentioned Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah. We don't need Ibn Taymiyyah. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullahi alayhi. If you take him out of the equation, take Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab out of the equation, if me and you were only going to speak about the first three generations, yani the Salaf and their creed, you wouldn't have, you know, you wouldn't be able to move. You would not be able to say anything because they don't speak with the kalam you speak with. The Salaf, rahimahullah, don't speak with jism and jawhar and hayyiz and and so on and so forth, and all of these uh, yani other things that you, the Ash'aris speak with, it's not existent in yani the, the time of the Salaf. So if our discussion was only related to what the Salaf believed in, trust me, you'd find it hard, if not near impossible, uh, to prove uh, your creed from them. You mentioned again Salafiyyah, yani with Tawa'if and groups, and he starts talking about uh, Ishaq, uh, what's his name, Al-Hawaini and others, and so on and so forth. Uh, but yani I can say the exact same about you. You guys are Tawa'if as well. Every Ash'ari I speak to, has his own understanding, has his own opinion. I know that there will be brothers today who will say, well, this guy, meaning yourself, Muhibbadeen, he's not knowledgeable, or he doesn't know what he's talking about. Every time I speak to somebody from the Ashaira, somebody else says, well, he's not knowledgeable enough, or he doesn't know what he's talking about, and so on and so forth. hal. What I would say is, uh, to those listening, again, listen very clear- carefully to my arguments. Listen how we, I stuck, and we stuck to the kalam of At-Tabari, rahimahullah, and we explained it, Yani very clearly what his intent was uh, in the context, and there was more within that actual within that actual um, a passage. Yani if you carry on reading, okay, you will see Atawir Rahimullah explains even further more, uh, giving the idea that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is above the Arsh. Ala kulli hal. I've sat with uh, people who are students of knowledge from the Ashaira, from the students of Dr. Abu, uh, what's his name, Bak- uh, uh, Hamza, uh, Dr. Hamza Al Bakri. His students, who even said to me point blank that many of the Ash'aris, especially on Twitter, they have no idea what they're talking about. I've sat with respectable Ash'ara, uh, يعني, who have knowledge uh, from them. My response to Ustad Asrar Rashid, for example, I've been to his house a couple of times, a few times we spoke. In the, you know, he doesn't argue in this way, the way you do, Akhi Mahibuddin. The arguments you brought today, not even he brings, not many of the Ash'ari don't bring these arguments uh, because they're not really strong at all. Um, يعني, also, like I said, refer to the other ayat that I posed with Tabri Rahimullah clearly explains these, um, this, this creed, Allah being above and so on and so forth, without, of course, uh, mentioning Ulu of Mulk and Sultan and so on and so forth, but purely saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above. يعني, the last is the citation that I can give, um, and there's more, but ala kulli hal, yeah, we haven't even touched on Tabri's other works, such as his Sarih al Sunnah and his Tabseer from uh, Ma'al al Din. Where he, you know, literally uh, destroys uh, the Jahmiya, the Mu'tazila, even the creed of the Ash'aris when it comes to certain sifat, because you don't agree with him in that. Um, you know, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ يَا هَمَانُ بْنِ لِي صَرْحًا لَعَلِّي أَبْلُغَ الْأَسْبَابِ أَسْبَابِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَطَلِعِ إِلَىٰ إِلَىٰهِ مُوسَى وَإِنِّي لَأَظُنُّهُ كَاذِبًا what does Tabri say? Wa inni la adhunu Musa kadiban fi ma yakul wa yadai min anna lahu fi sama i rabban arsalahu ilayna. Fir'aun said, O Haman, construct for me a tower that I might reach the ways, the ways into the heaven, so that I may look at the deity of Moses. But indeed, I think he is a liar. Tabri, what did he say? Tabri said that Fir'aun is saying basically, I think, and I'm quoting, I think Moses is a liar in that which he says and claims that he has a Lord above the heavens that sent him to us. Um, yeah, this is again very explicit. Uh, where Tabri rahimullah affirms that belief Allah has been big the This is not a Christian belief, يعني, the way Christians believe in it, even though the Yehud and the Nasara and يعني, everybody with Asan Fitra. Their belief is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above the arsh. This is something that even uh, our family members uh, attest to. And this is يعني, the claim where the, the Ash'ari said that their majority and so on and so forth is unfounded. You ask the, the people, the local people on the street, the taxi driver, the one who works in the shop, they do not know the Ash'ari creed. To claim that they are Ash'ari is, is absolutely fallacious. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Jalla wa ala, just as Bajuri says, Bajuri says in his, in his, in his, in his, in his uh, sharh of Umar al he mentions, 
فَلْيَحْذَرْ كُلَّ الْحَذَرْ Beware of what? The عَامَّة The majority of the masses believe that Allah is above the arsh or He's above uh, عَلَى كُلِّ حَالٍ There's so much I could bring. I mean, to be honest with you, I am really disappointed at this uh, discussion. I thought that you would give a bit more Akhi Muhibbu din in regards to your explanation, but you haven't really justified anything. You've just claimed iddi'at, yani you've claimed, you have um, speculated, you've inferred, and basically uh, there's nothing for me to work with in terms of what you bring. You didn't, re- you didn't actually prove anything from Tabir Rahimahullah Ta'ala except repeat a couple of statements uh, without realizing the context in which these statements were said and what Tabri is actually trying to say. And I'm actually quite amazed and shocked how, you know, it's how clear the language is, uh, subhanAllah, how you, you, know, you refuse or that you don't uh, know how Tabri uh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, what he's actually saying, which is you know, the opposite. Uh, I mean, the closing statement would be uh, that um, for everybody who is munsif and just to go back to the actual words of Imam Tabir Rahimahullah, what did he say in the context? What did he mean? Look at his other works, look at his other books, and look also at the Salaf Rahimahullah and what they said. And whatever Brother Minhaj is saying, Brother Muhibbuddin is saying, then did the Salaf Rahimahullah say that? Do you find it in the books? Do you find it in the works? Such as the Aqeed of Abu Uthman al Darami, Aqeed al Raziyain, the Usul al Sunnah of Imam Ahmad Rahimullah, Sharul Sul Aqtiqad, Ahl Sunnah by Al Ghalikai, likewise Sarih al Sunnah uh, by uh, Muzani and other books as well from the Salaf. Do you ever find this type of speech of the Ashraf in those books? And the answer would be, of course, no. Wallahu tabarak wa ta'ala a'lam. Alhamdulillah. This is my closing argument. Your statement, Number not, one. not argument, your statement. Our <laughs> statement. Now that's another cup of coffee. Um, number one, we don't need to get into discussions of Jawhar and Arad and Jisn because I do not believe that the Wahhabi movement with all of its different colors is capable to have an actual academic discussion. That's not what we actually are seeing here. What we're seeing is tampering and twisting words from different scholars, from the Salaf onwards. Every mas'ala that you've presented, you showed no evidence whatsoever. But you're fine with repeating and saying, I showed evidence, yet you didn't. No, you just read the words and tried to translate them in the way that you want to show them. And then you say, well, if we went over the rest of the Tabari, well, Tabari says in Tafsir Ayat Al-Kursi, what does he say? Wal-Ali, meaning Jul-Ulu wal-Irtifa' How? Ala khalqihi bi His Ulu wal irtifaa over his creation by his might and ability and power, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The issue here is that, again, as I said last time, you are understanding the words of the scholars of Islam in the way, in the way that these people believe. What's happening is that you're giving a mind, you're preconditioning it to a set of ideas. Then you are force reading them, or uh, forcing them to read text in a certain way. And also you're fabricating a whole lot along the way. A Deremi's book, really to prove that it, that is actually Deremi's book, is impossible. Al-Karji, you made up things and claimed that, that was what Al-Karji said. Kitab al-Sunnah by Imam Ahmad, there's, I mean, there's so much issues in the chain, it's almost hilarious. The, the actual Hanabila say, we narrate some of what's in it, but there's a lot that's in it that we don't even accept, we are not even sure where it came from. Al-Radda al jahmiyyah well, that's a whole other disaster, and so on. But if we were to open up the book of Al-Muzani, Al-Sabuni, Al-Isma'ili, as a matter of fact, they literally are repeating the aqidah of the Ashairah. You see, you picked on al-Jawhar, al-Arab, al-Jism, not knowing 
because you do not know that ilm al-kalam and ilm al-aqidah are actually two separate knowledges, two separate sciences, two separate arts, realistically, because ilm al-kalam can be a discussion via algebra. And it has nothing to do with creed because you are speaking to people that do not believe. So why would I bring particles to a discussion and supposedly already believe in God? Unless there's issues there, then I can definitely open up that discussion. But, you know, I'm thinking, you know, at least the, the basics you have covered. And then you come and say, oh, the layman this and the layman that. Ya Habib, al-ammi la madhab lahu. I mean, come on. I mean, if you're assuming, no, you've heard this before. A layman has no madhab. When we say that the awam or a sha'ira, it doesn't mean that he memorizes al khalid al bahi and Jawharat al tawhi It does not mean that he knows discussions in philosophy. No. We say he's ash'ari because he's munazza. Because if you stop him and say, God might have two eyes, but maybe a million, we're not really sure. There's a lot of differences and debates, and he might have a foot that might be going into hell, but he might have. You know what he's going to say? He's going to ask you, you know, is this like Scientology? Hinduism? Like, where is this this coming from? Because this is not Islam. What the Wahhabiyah preach in creed is not Islam. Now, when the Salaf say we accept what was narrated, yes, if I have no idea what to think beyond the fact that I have a sound narration, sound met, sound sanat, I accept it. I'm silent. Now, the Mu'tazila, the Jahmiyyah, they have different styles, different systems, how they approach these things. They go ahead and try to cancel them out in their entirety. That is kufr. That is kufr. According to the Ash'ara, that's kufr. But also is the other side. And this is why Al-Imam Al-Mutawalli, Abu Sa'ad Al-Mutawalli, the Shafi'i scholar. Also, similar things were said by Abu Ishaq Al-Shirazi, and Al-Mawurdi, and Abu Tayyib Al-Tabal, and the thousands of other Shafi'i scholars, they said clearly, what? إِذَا أَوْصَى لِأَجْهَلِ النَّاسِ Someone has a will, and he writes, he says, this amount of money is going to go to the most ignorant of people. He said, the Mujassima. And then some of them differed later on and said, well, maybe the Imamiyya. And really, my opinion, if I'm going to give a, you know, a modern day tarjih, as people like to say, I'd say, let's split it between them. But, you know, you keep on saying, oh, you, you're not touching upon the topic. You're not touching upon the discussion. Yes, I did. I, I did. And we read, but you're translating things inaccurately. Al-Imam al-Tabari says, لا تحيط به الأوهام ولا تحويه الأقطار ولا تدركه الأبصار Yet, but the Wahhabi say, تحويه الأقطار, تحويه قطر But then they say, it's not really تحويه, it's more like he's above Yet you're going around telling laymen, say, في السماء, في السماء, في السماء And you don't believe he's في السماء, you believe something else the issue here is not is not the works of the scholars. The issue here is how you are twisting the statements of the scholars. That's why I try to explain to you the meanings of ulu and irtifa in the dictionary. Because if we look at the definition of these words in the dictionary. They don't mean something on top of something. They could mean, they don't necessarily mean. That will go back to the siyaq. Imam al-Tabari, he says, Al-Azim dhul azama Al-Ladhi kulla shay'in dunahu Fala shay'a a'azama minhu You want to know how Wahhabis actually explain this? They say that God is physically bigger than everything. Yes, this is literally what they believe. So when you come and say our opinion or our statement, and claim, of course, it belongs to the Salaf, which is not true, but you claim that it is, right? Uh, No, you're getting your understanding from the Gospels. This is why Ibn Taymiyyah fought to that point to say that the Gospels have only been tampered with via Ta'wil, how they explain them, not 
that the wording is changed. Again, I would like to know what gospel he was talking about because, I mean, let's face it, they don't even know who wrote them. <laughs> Kalam Jamil. Al Imam Al Tabari says, وَمَنْ لَا يَجُوزُ عَلَيْهِ الْإِجْتِمَاعُ وَالْإِفْتِرَاقُ but, 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 but that's what Salafi said. They say the words come out of him. And the Tabari also says in his book of Aqidah that you claim that destroys the Aqidah of the Asha'ira. He says, فَإِنْ زَعْنَ خَلْقُهُ فِي ذَاتِهِ فَقَدْ أَوْجَبَ أَنْ تَكُونَ ذَاتُهُ مَحَلًا لِلْخَلْقِ وَذَلِكَ عِنْدَ الْجَمِيعِ كُفْرِ Ya Allah. Basically, that sentence right there just says that the Wahhabi creed is kufr. Because you say that words come out of him. Allah Musta'an. So, in conclusion, I have responded. You are, again, using the lens of Ibn Taymiyyah and the Wahhabiyyah to read the words of the Tabari. And you're disregarding everything I said, which is a common behavior from the Wahhabiyyah. I do not see that this will really uh, solve anything until, and I give this nasiha to everyone that has been plugged into the Wahhabiyyah and the Taymi claim. You don't have to take anything from me, okay? I normally like to keep conversations very basic and simple before getting into anything complex because... Most people, when you're teaching them ahkam al-siyam, and you say if you swallow your belgum that got to your mouth, they automatically freeze for half an hour, don't know what belgum means. So I'm not going to get into complex discussions. You have to be, you have to think about people listening. That's why I made this open to everyone. If you are influenced by any group, you know something? Even the ash'aris. You need to disconnect from everything. Go back to authentic sources, not fabrications, authentic sources, and read. The evidence is so clear. Yeah, so I do agree with Ihsan on that point. You know, then call that a positive thing. Let's go back to the sources that we need. Not the fabricated ones, the actual sources. Take, for example, Imam al baghawi When he did tafsir for Ar-Rahman al arsh istawa you know what he wrote? Ar-Rahman al arsh istawa Think about that for a minute. Al Imam al Baghawi, as tafsir for Ar Rahman wa Arsh Istawa, he wrote Ar Rahman wa Arsh Istawa. Al Imam al Tabari, in his book of Aqidah, he said, after mentioning the Ayn, the Yad, and so on and so on, he said, What? Hadihi al Ma'ani. Yeah, because they're Sifat Ma'ani, not Sifat Ayn, like Ibn Taymiyyah calls them. Sifat Ayn, that means they're physical body parts. Sifat Ma'ani means that Laha Ma'ani, Laysat Mahsusa, they're not physical. Let's go back to Imam Al Humaydi. Let's go back to Ismail Al Humaydi, by the way. You know what he says? He says that the Sunnah is to repeat the verse and go silent. And if someone says, No, repeat the verse and go silent. And if someone says, that, Repeat the verse and go silent. And you know, whoever adds afterwards, is a jahmi. We ashara, we say Ar Rahman al Arsh istawa. Whoever tampers with that, rejecting, twisting, turning, is a kafir. That's the mu'taqad of the ashara. Don't listen to the Wahhabi that say, oh, they're dealing in the Greek philosophy. No, on the contrary. Okay, yeah, we might speak on it in books of kalam because we're arguing people that are not Muslim, you know, they don't believe in the Quran and Sunnah. You gotta be at their level, you have to bring it close to them, so it could be philosophy, it could be third grade math, it could be a guy that grows herbs in his garden, and he loves herbs, and you speak, or you build a discussion around herbs, and how amazing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put benefits in these small, fragile plants, right? That's Ilm al-Kalam. It's not limited to one science. I mean, if you open up al Mawqif by Al-Adul al he speaks about democracy in one chapter. Another chapter, he's speaking about a sponge and a bucket of water. Because that's kalam. It, it covers every science on the face of the earth, along with what's in your heart. You know, you hear people become Muslim because they wanted a sign and the window slammed open. Yeah, you might use that as a kalam argument. Because that, that, that's, that's what kalam is. However, aqidah is different. 
The asl is that we believe everything that Allah and His Messenger has said. End of story. Al Imam Al Mutawalli, in his book of Kalam, Al Ghunya fi Usul al Din, what does he say? He says, if people stop tampering with these verses, like Allah and His Messenger told us, then we would stop pointing out ta'wil. But if they don't, then we will continue defending. That's our, that's our responsibility. And we'll continue to do so. So break free of the chains of these ideas that these people claim and go back to the sources. Read the Quran. <coughs> Read the Ahadith in Bukhari, in Muslim, Kutub al-Sitta, or Kutub al tisa even I know some brothers of Hadith do not like Kutub al because that was an Orientalist idea. But no matter what, all of the Al-Kutub al-Musnada follow the shuruh of the accepted ulama. will allow for questions. <laughs> now, uh, we'll allow questions. Please, uh, I know that some brothers wrote questions. Please go ahead and write question to Fulan. So, tafadol al-akhwan. If Brother Ahsan has time, uh, yeah, I mean, um, we'll take a few questions. Um, so, whoever has questions, please go ahead and um, I'll keep an eye on anyone who comes in. Please say, um, I, I thought that's what I had done. Long time. I wanted to the group, so even Zoom emailed me and said, you should have done that because everyone's going to come in. A long time. But, um, so yes, whoever has a question, please direct it to whoever. I started uh, studying ilm back in 98. Um, I was, how old was I back then? I was in my mid-teens. Uh, so I've been a very, uh, a very long journey. I've traveled many places. I've met many people. So yes, yes, I, I've come across many people. I studied with many people that might have not been an, um, uh, a suitable individual. But you know, Imam Malik he has a beautiful statement. He says that he narrated from several of his teachers that he would never um, repeat what they narrated or repeat what they said. Allah alam. There's another question here. I do not, uh, Brother Fahim, who is that question for? If you could just mention who it's for, so that way we give everyone an opportunity to respond. Uh, Ihsan, that question is for you, if you can see it. Right, so in the context of Imam Tabari's explanation of Istiwa, does he assume a literal physical meaning of it? even in his other works. Imam Tabir rahimahullah, when it comes to the tafsir of the Qur'an, like I have quoted several references, uh, in, in fact this one as well, but Tabir rahimahullah, he treats and he gives the meaning of uh, this word istiwa to be an action. يعني, ala wartafa'a. In the language of the Arabs, this is what it means. Ala wartafa'a. Yani ala alayh. That's what Tabari said. Ala alayh. This cannot have any other meaning except for what it actually is that he elevated. Yeah, it's an action. Because Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we affirm the af'al al of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he jalla wa ala, he does uh, actions whenever he subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. They are muta'alaq wa mashi'atihi. As for other <coughs> places, Tabir rahimahullah, he talks about the sifat in general. For example, Sarih al-Sunnah. Uh, Tabari rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions regarding uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being above the arsh, that he, sh he says, um, and I'm quoting from my head, uh, Tabari rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, and that a person, he should know that his Lord is the one who istawa ala al-arsh, or that istawa ala arsh, that he rolls over the throne, and whoever says anything other than this, then he has become misguided, and he of course uh, has gone astray because we don't make ta'wil of the sifat of Allah like for example some of the Asha'ara they make ta'wil or they say they, they speak with ta'wil we don't speak with ta'wil we don't make ta'wil we leave them as they are as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said because as they are it gives us the meaning anyways يعني, when you say ar-Rahman or al-Arsh istawa khalas stop there it's ma'loom it's known we don't need to say this means his tadbir or this means his istila or whatever the case La, we don't give it those different meanings like the Jahmiyyah they did as Imam al-Tirmidhi said, that he, the, the Jahmiyyah, they give meanings to the sifat of Allah Azza wa Jal in order to, um, in order to uh, denounce of Allah Azza wa Jal from these attributes. 
Um, so yes, there are other like Ma'alim Tafsir al-Din, Tabri Rahimullah talks about Sifat of Allah Azza wa Jal, the Mu'taqad of Ahlul Sunnah generally, it's exactly as we believe, and his Tafsir is the best when it comes to the actual istiwa, yani, where he affirms them as actions for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think another brother, a question was asked to, to myself, um, that uh, is Allah a physical entity? So then of course, uh, we ask, you know, well, what do you mean by physical? If, if, if physical, according to you, is anything that is seeable and tangible in your hands as in this world, then this meaning is negated from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Physical as in Allah Azza wa Jal exists. Yani, does Allah exist? Is, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an actual entity? Is He himself, yani, he, he subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is an entity, He exists, isn't it? So if you mean by physical in that sense, then we say, yes, Allah Azza wa Jal, He exists. Um, yani, he is something, he's not a thought in the mind, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not something that uh, is just a thought in the mind. Allah Azza wa he of course exists, he has wujud, jalla wa ala. Uh, and I think another ask, question was asked that, can you respond to Tabir referring to ulu as power in tafsir of Adil Kursi? Yes, Jazakallah khair, thank you for reminding me. Uh, when Tabir rahimullah ta'ala, he said, wa huwa al-ali, and he is al-ali, al-azim, uh, brother, uh, what's his name, um, uh, Brother Muhibbadeen mentioned that Tabir Rahimullah he said, and let me just bring the quote up because it was something actually I wanted to say to him, but of course I couldn't because he was speaking. Uh, Tabir Rahimullah ta'ala he said that Al Ali, Yani Al Fa'il, Min Qawlika Ala Ya'lu Uluwan. So of course here, which context is he talking about? Wa huwa Al Ali Al Azim. Allah is Al Ali. Okay? So it's not talking about Istiwa Ala or Ila, he's talking about Al Ali. So then he says, he comes from Ala Ya'lu Uluwan. إذا ارتفع okay, فهو عال وعلي والعلي ذو العلو والارتفاع على خلقه بقدرته Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the possessor of highness and elevation over his creation by his power and his قدرة and this is something like I said before in our discussion we believe and agree because this context وهو العلي العظيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is affirming for himself العلو المطلق we believe Allah has علو in his that in his essence his قدر and his قهر subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, of course, the brother uh, Muhibuddin he quoted uh, Qawli, uh, Al-Azim, Dhul Azma, and so on and so forth. But then I wanted to say to him, why don't you carry on reading? Because if you carry on reading, Tabi Rahimullah he says, Qala Abu Ja'far, wa akhtalafa ahlu al bahthi fi ma'ya qawlihi, wa huwa al Ali. The people of yani, Al Bahth and, uh, uh, of course, in, in, in this sense, talking about the Sifat, they said, Qala ba'duhum, ya'ni bi dhalika, wa huwa al Ali, an al Nadir wal Ashba. He is the most highest, يعني, of having anything resembling him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَنْكَرُوا أَنْ يَكُونَ مَعْنَ ذَلِكَ And they rejected that the meaning is, وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْمَكَانِ That he is high in a place. وَقَالُوا غَيْرْ جَائِزْ أَنْ يَخْلُوا مِنْهُ مَكَانِ They said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is not, يعني, he is everywhere basically. There is no place except that he is the غَيْرْ جَائِزْ أَنْ يَخْلُوا مِنْهُ مَكَانِ وَلَا مَعْنَ لِوَصْفِهِ بِالْعُولِ مَكَانِ لِأَنَّ ذَلِكَ وَصْفُهُ بِأَنَّهُ فِي مَكَانٍ دُونَ مَكَانٍ So these are, this is the position of the حُلُولِيَا What does Tabari say afterwards? وَقَالَ آخَرُونَ And others said مَعْنَ ذَلِكَ And the meaning of that is وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ عَلَى خَلْقِهِ بِارْتِفَاعِ مَكَانِهِ عَنْ أَمَاكِنِ خَلْقِهِ And this is what Brother Muhibbuddin did not uh, mention. That he, Allah, is the most high over his creation. بِارْتِفَاعِ مَكَانِهِ عَنْ أَمَاكِنِ خَلْقِهِ With his highness in his place, above all of the places from creation. لِأَنَّهُ تَعَالَى ذِكْرَهُ Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فوق جميع خلقه وخلقه دونه. Allah is above all of His creation, and His creation is يعني beneath Him, يعني other than Him. كما وصف به نفسه أنه على العرش. Just as He has described Himself that He is above the arsh, فهو عال بذلك عليهم. So He is high over them in that sense. Tabri rahimullah quotes this position as well, and of course He mentions it in a way. Uh, yani to, to show, and if you look at other quotes which I mentioned, which Brother Muhibbin never really uh, answered because we need a lot of time, he says the exact same thing that Allah is ala al arsh, He's above the arsh, He's above the arsh subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, there's more questions, uh, but um, Brother Minhaj, if you want to, yeah, you, you got time to carry on? or? Uh, I have a few more minutes. Yeah, I mean, most of these questions they talked about, you know, is is creation directed? Uh, is direction created? Well, yes, the direction okay, well, was created. Yeah. Please go ahead and answer that. Is direction created? Yeah. So Tabri, uh, Tahawi rahimahullah, he says that the six directions do not contain Allah subhanahu wa taala 
Kasair al Mubtadaat, just as the six directions contain creation, they don't contain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah is ba'in and khalqihi. Allah is separate and distinct from His creation subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, when we say Allah is above the arsh, does that mean that Allah is limited by direction? No, it doesn't necessitate that at all. When we say Allah is al arsh, we are affirming what the, 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 the evidence affirms and that He is ba'in and khalqihi. That yani, creation has a had. There is a limit to creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is outside of his creation, Jalla wa ala. He's not within it. And when Tahawi was talking about the sixth direction, he was re- referring to kasair al mubtadaat just as the creation is contained. Of course, Allah is not contained like that. He's above. And if you believe the universe is eternal, then of course that's disbelief. But we don't believe the universe is eternal. Allah can be outside of his creation, above the arsh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, just as he has has said. Um ala kulli hal. And then this brother says that you make ta'wil on the narrations that mention Allah having two right hands. Why are you lying? We haven't made ta'wil at all. Uh, that is a different issue. Um, which of course, when we say the, the hadith mentions Allah has two right hands, the meaning here, the actual meaning, the apparent of, of it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his hands, this is idhafat of ishraf. It doesn't mean that you know, when we say two right hands, that this is ta'wil. No, this is what it actually means because there are other hadith with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam referred to the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as being the other hand ala kulli hal I mean that's another long mas'ala that perhaps I can make a video on and explain inshallah na bithni lai ta'ala will do as well so I'll note this question down and respond to it perhaps in a thread or perhaps in a video inshallah ta'ala um, ala kulli hal I mean other people have said uh, so you can see the kameen power uh, al-minhaj what's your response okay that's for yourself ala kulli hal um, na'am well b- 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 I answered at the bottom where I said where he said وَقَالَ أَخَرُونَ That's not a Tabari's opinion. Tabari is enough stating all the different opinions. So no, that's fine. That's what Tabari believes in. But if you look, but of course, uh, he said وَقَالَ أَخَرُونَ However, if you look at the language, the way he's using it, that يعني, he's using it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being عَلَى الْعَرْشِ And we find this phrase Tabari affirming عَلَى الْعَرْشِ as well. But that's of course, like you say, a different discussion. We're going to dis- dis- disagree on that anyways. Uh, one brother he mentioned here as well. Um, I want to know for the Salafists when you all is ithbat of had for Allah, does had itself a tra- is it a transcendence or division? A had a had in the Arabic language means a tamiz or yeah, tamayyuz, yeah, to dis- be distinct. It doesn't mean limit. Many people translate it as limit. Yes, that is one of the meanings. However, when we say had for Allah, what we we don't mean limit. What we mean is a tabayun, yeah, yeah, that he is distinct and separate from his creation, and everybody believes in that anyways. Ala kulli hal. Uh, one asks, where was Allah in reference to the throne before? Excellent question. This was asked to Sulaiman al taymi Imam Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala has a book called Khalq Afa'al al-Ibad, another book that you should read. In there, there's a narration by Sulaiman al taymi He said, if somebody asks me, where is Allah? I will say, fis sama, that he is above the heavens. And then, if somebody asks me, where was Allah before that? He would say, la adri, I don't know. Ahlul Sunnah, we always affirm for Allah, al-ulu al-mutlaq, that Allah has... Ulu al mutlaq bidatihi that he's always been high and separate and distinct from his creation subhanahu wa ta'ala. In regards to reference of the throne, then of course we say La Adri, but we affirm for Allah Ulu al Mutlaq because the Arsh is something which is Mahdath, it is something which is created a created entity. Allah Kulihal, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding it, Thumma stawa al arsh. Yani after he created the heavens and the earth in six days, Thumma stawa al arsh, the he jalla wa ala rose above it. And I wonder that befits his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, basically what's in the gospels. No, well, uh, I mean, or if, if if well, Subhanallah, I mean, that's that, that's the thing we would use that against you. That Yani Ka'b ibn Ahbar says that Allah said in the Torah, "I am Allah above my throne." Yani this is the belief, the fitrah. Then of course this is something good, but of course the Christians and the Jews that wouldn't be they, fitrah. They, that would be what Ka'b al Ahbar is explaining about what the Jews believe, and Ka'b al Ahbar. Well, he not said it. Well, well, I didn't say he was a prophet, but I'm saying he's and he's from the those from the Tabi'in, but he said it in a, an affirmative way. The Jews and Christians, we know that they're mujassima. Why? Because they describe Allah with naqais, and we don't. That's the difference between us and them. However, there are certain generalities <laughs> where we are. <assume. laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, for example, uh, yeah, say, no, of course it does, of course it does. That, that which has no, not in creation, <laughs> to affirm that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's not that's not to see, of course it is to like in Allah. Uh, yeah, that's first the question, so we can go, inshallah. Ta'ala. <laughs>
I see. Long uh, time. I think Brother Fahim had another question for you. In regards to this, call out the final in, question, in, inshallah, so that way. We don't anything. In regards to his brother Ali, who keeps on asking me about ulama, then we have ulama in Medina. You're more than welcome to come to the Islamic University in Medina. Our doors are open. You can come in any time and discuss with any of our professors. In regards to do the Salafis not have any qualified ulama in England, then I'd say to you, watch the debate with Abdurrahman Hassan, where he completely, alhamdulillah, answered uh, Asrar Rashid on those issues. Ala kulli hal. Wallahu alam. Jazakallah khair for your time, Akhi Mohibuddin. But by the way, I'm, still, I, I'm still going to block you because <laughs> I can't be asked with the notifications. Ala kulli hal. But uh, alhamdulillah, no, but... hopefully, yani, you know now my position and our position. Jazakallah khair for the, 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 the uh, opportunity. Wa faqakum Allah ta'ala wa faqallahu jameer. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um... No, I see a lot of the brothers are... At this point, uh, the Zoom uh, discussion has been terminated. Uh, so, I'm just going to mention a few points that uh, the brother mentioned, which were, of course, in our opinion, and in reality, erroneous. <coughs> uh, he mentioned one of them was that يعني, there's nobody who can have an academic discussion on these issues. Uh, and trust me, there are. There are, yeah, and we can bring mashayikh and uh, professors who, yeah, I mean, Sheikh Saleh Sindi, for example, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, you can look at his works, Sheikh Abdullah Al Ujayri, Sheikh Sultan Al Umayri, uh, other mashayikh as well, and ulama uh, who speak about these issues, Sheikh Walid Ibn Sa'id, uh, uh, Rashid Sa'idan, Afwan, other mashayikh and ulama, you refer to our works who they go into depth in regards to these issues as well. Uh, I mean, you know, there's so much professors as well and so much works that we can cite. I mean, there's one book that I recently bought, Qalb al-Adilla, Ala Tawa'if al-Mudilla, Fi Tawheed al-Rubiya wa al sifat by Tamim ibn Abdul Aziz, uh, Muhammad al-Qadi. So many books uh, refer to the book, which is a Radda Nasaif al-Asri, Maqalat al-Tafweed, Bain al-Musallafi wa Mutkalmeen, by Sheikh Mahmoud, or Dr. Mahmoud ibn Mahmoud al-Khadair. We have so many books and so many, uh, يعني, uh, professors and students of knowledge and ulama who can academically respond to all of those claims. I mean, the brother mentioned that I was tampering with the words uh, and he yet didn't provide how or where in our discussion. He didn't show me where we tampered. He didn't mention it. He, you know, this is just a claim again. He said that, you know, we was tampering. This is his closing statement, by the way, that we tamper, but he didn't provide an example. And they never do. You know, where did we tamper? Show us how we tampered. Where did we tamper? Um, another example was no evidence about myself was given um, so when I was speaking about Tabari and I was citing Tabari, why didn't he in his presentation show me that I never provided evidence? I did provide evidence, but he did not uh, address it. Likewise, with the evidence from other places in Tabari, uh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, uh, he didn't touch upon because he said it needs time, whatever the case is. Uh, he also mentioned uh, regarding Surah uh, Baqarah, wa huwa Ali al Of course, we answered that with Alhamd. He mentioned that I spoke about Al-Karji. No, I didn't. Um, and then he said, for example, if you say to the Ammi, yani look, look at this, subhanAllah, the Awam, <coughs> they don't hold the belief of the Ashaira. He said, of course, they're not going to know the intricates and the details, which is, of course, true. However, the general belief, if you give the Quran to an Ammi and tell him to read about the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ayat regarding his sifat, is he going to make ta'wil or is he going to believe them as they are? Because this brother, he specifically said, if you stop him, and you say to the Ammi X, Y, Z, if you stop him uh, and, and you say X, Y, Z, and of course, and this is the problem, the, the, the Ammi, if you leave him as he is upon his Iman, he would never come to the Ash'ari, Aqeedah and conclusion, except that you have to infer and you have to say to him, that, oh, these verses, don't you think it means this? Yeah, and you put that idea into his mind first and foremost. And this is something which is tried and tested and you can do that. Show the ayat of the Sifat to the Awam. That Allah is above the Arsh, and then you're asking, Where is Allah? They will quote what the Quran says that He's above the Arsh. They're not going to come with this detailed explanation that the brother was referring to, it, unless you go to an actual person and you put that in his head that, you know, this is how it should be, and so on and so forth. Uh, the brother mentioned that I was translating Tabari incorrectly. Uh, he said this right at the end, but he did not correct me through my presentation. Why say it right at the end? If I was translating incorrectly, you should have told me. But he did not tell me once that I was translating incorrectly. Neither did he bring that up because we could have spoke about that. But of course, he didn't address that. He just said it again at the end without evidence. He mentioned that, you know, Wahhabis, we say that Allah is contained and so on and so forth. Again, another claim without evidence. Show us where. He says that I was twisting the words of the scholars. How was I twisting? I was quoting verbatim. I was quoting exactly how it's mentioned. 
how were we twisting, where do we twist, what do we twist. You have to bring evidence for that twisting. Uh, the only one who actually twists with the words of the scholars apparently was the brother himself and the Ashaira. They cannot leave the kalam of the Salaf as it is. And this is one thing that we have noticed that when uh, they uh, mention the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have to infer their ta'wil or they have to negate the apparent meaning and fall into tafweed and so on and so forth. So who is actually twisting and tampering with the words of the ulama and the nasus and the texts? Uh, the brother talks about, oh, this is how the meaning is in the dictionary. Uh, you know, dictionaries are not end-all, be-all authorities. You know, there was no dictionaries in the time of the Salaf in that sense. Dictionaries are a later invention. And you know, so we're not saying they're wrong. Of course, they're correct. But language, certain words have certain contexts and certain meanings. You cannot take words out of different contexts and apply them to uh, yeah, any, uh, what we're talking about here. So when Allah talks about, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ You can't take that meaning of irtifa and place it to thumma ila sama because the context is different this is how language works anybody who knows the language will tell you this even honest ashaira will tell you this uh, but these are just poor attempts in order to prove points uh, which they cannot do using uh, the, the same context anyways because the language does not allow for that um, he mentions that the wahhabis we say that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is physically uh, yeah, the biggest and so on and so forth Again, when you say that the Wahhabi say Why don't you cite, why don't you quote You know, Why don't you show us where we say this None of us actually even believe in that He, he mentioned Tabri rahimahullah Talking about um, a certain quote and Tabri was actually referring to the Hululiya Those who believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Is everywhere and in everything That's what the Jahmiya believe that Allah Azza wa Jal is everywhere uh, And this is what they creed as well Tabri was actually refuting them uh, so this is not a refutation of us at all because we don't believe Allah Azawajal is mixed or with his creation. Um, then he started talking about Tawri and the Ma'ani and so on and so forth. <coughs> again, that was a poor understanding out of its context. Tabir rahimahullah ta'ala, again, uh, he clearly states that we believe in these meanings, we believe in uh, these ahadith and these uh, uh, sifat just as they are. You know, you can refer to his tafsir fi Ma'alim al where he uh, clearly mentions that, <coughs> uh, subhanAllah, where he says, uh, that we انتثبت حقائقها على ما نعرف من جهة الإثبات ونفي التشبيه that we affirm the realities of these attributes يعني in, 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 in affirmation and نفي التشبيه and we, we, did, we deny and negate any likeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the creation and he said another thing على ما يعقل من حقيقة الإثبات all of these different um, uh, words for example فإن قال لنا قائل فما الصواب من القول في معاني هذه الصفات التي ذكرت then what is the uh, correct understanding of the meanings of these attributes which you have mentioned? And then he continues to mention that we affirm them ala haqiqat al-ithbati and so on and so forth or haqiqatan in reality ala jihat al-ithbat and then he mentions of course that the sifat of Allah are not like that of the creation um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yasma' al-aswat la bi kharqin في أذن ولا جارحة كالجوارح جوارح بني آدم وكذلك يبصر الأشخاص ببصر لا يشبه أبصار بني آدم. look how look how Ibn Jarir Tabari رحمه الله تعالى is you know is using these sifat. he is saying that yes we affirm the sifat but not as the creation are. يعني the creation has deficiency uh, when it comes to certain attributes. and look how Tabari رحمه الله didn't deny the meaning he affirmed the meanings but in that which uh, befits his Majesty سبحانه وتعالى um, Sarih al-Sunnah Al-Tabseer fi Ma'alim al-Din These are two books of uh, Aqeedah Of Tabri rahimullah That the Ashari's don't agree with When it comes to the Ru'ya of Allah When it comes to the Kalam of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala as well They do not quote Tabri as an authority And this is something that An honest Ashari would tell you Even say for uh, Al-Asri He mentions Tabri a few times But he doesn't mention uh, As him being from The Mufawwadah Ala kulli hal um, But they do not cite Tabri as an authority uh, there are many examples in my presentation I gave, the brother did not answer them. And you can go back uh, to those examples where Allah, where Tabri Rahimullah mentions the ayat, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made istiwa, and so on and so forth. Uh, likewise, uh, he mentioned that we repeat the verse and be silent. Or this is the manhaj of Ahl sunnah that we repeat the verse and be silent. Ya late, if only you did that, if only he, they do that. Ash'aris, they don't keep silent, that's the point. They negate the actual apparent meaning. And then they fall into tafweed or ta'weed. So who is actually remaining silent when Allah says, Ar-Rahman wa ala rishtawa? We are not the ones who say that his istiwa has to mean his ghalaba, or his istiwa has to mean his qudra, and so on and so forth, or istila, whatever the case. No, we leave it as it is, because we know what it means. 
Ar-Rahman wa ala arsh istah, the most merciful, he rose over the throne, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas the Jahmiyyah, the Mu'tazila, they had to make ta'wil. And those from the Ashara who have the opinion of ta'wil, they make ta'wil, even though they don't specify it. They say that it could mean this, yahtamal. And some of them make tafweed and so on and so forth. But, like we say, we repeat the verse and be silent because we believe in it. It is how it is. And repeating the verse and being silent does not equal tafweed. It does not equal tafweed at all. That's just an inference and a speculation. And then of course, he at the end he says, go back to the sources. And um, yes, that's why I say, go back to the sources. Go back to the books of hadith. And tell me, do you find the creed of the Asha'ira in Kitab al-Tawheed by Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah? Do you find the aqidah of the Asha'ira in the... Uh, uh, Abu Dawood where you, make, where you mention Rad al Jahmiya, do you find any of their creed within these books of hadith? No. Do you find it within the works of Salaf? No. And then the brother started mentioning some uh, examples and of course uh, yani not as uh, the actual book says. If you go back to the actual books and you read what the Salaf said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, without Ibn Taymiyyah of course, you'll understand uh, what the intent was. Ala kulli hal. Ta'ala, I will be making uh, a, a video insha'Allah in regards to the aqidah of al-Tabari in detail bi ta'ala in the future uh, and in regards to this discussion then alhamdulillah it was a good discussion which just reinforces uh, my uh, thoughts and yani, what we see continuously is that these brothers uh, they don't really actually tackle the issue they don't mention in detail they don't bring evidence it's just based upon speculation assumption and distortion these three things are key when you speak to uh, such brothers and when you yani, dialogue with <clears throat> these people, assumption, assuming, uh, yani, distortion of the actual words and what they say, and speculation, they speculate. These three things are common with Ashari arguments. Uh, and you will see that they don't deal with the actual nusus of the Quran and the Sunnah upon the understanding of the Salaf, Rahimahumullah Ta'ala, but rather it's their inference, it's their logic at the end of the day, it's what they go back to, like he said, Ilm al Kalam and other issues. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best bi Allah perhaps in the future we can expand on these things wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam mubarak ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in